I've been writing some C Go code recently, and I wanted to go through a couple of examples of C Go. Um, so C Go is a way to call C code from Go. It basically lets you use some existing C libraries, or in some cases, you might want to write custom C code for performance reasons. It is enabled by default, but can be disabled to be the dash C Go flag. So let's jump into some examples. So this is a very simple example. We have a C function here that does addition. And we have this import C statement over here. And by convention, the code surrounded by these comments above import C will be pulled in and compiled by the, uh, by the Go compiler. So in this case, um, I am calling this add function that I created here with this syntax c dot add, and I'm put I'm passing two numbers to it. So let's run this, and it prints out three. Let's go to the next example. So here I am adding a little more. Um, I'm including a math math function and I'm using the floor um, I'm using including the math library and I'm using the floor function from there so this gets linked in to the correct place and because math is one of the standard C libraries there's no additional compilation flags needed so we can just run this and um, you know, I'm adding 2.1 to one and the floor of that is going to be three. And that is the result down here. Okay. Let's move on to the next example. Here I am trying to do a hello world print using the C's print F function. However, this is not going to work. Let's try this. I mean, the syntax looks fine, print F, and I'm using a uh, special C string function, which is, uh, is mentioned in the documentation. It is uh, one of the few special functions to convert between Go and C types, so C string. I pass in a Go string, I get a, uh, a C string. Let's uh, call this and see what happens. Okay, it gives me this error on line nine, column two, unexpected type, dot, dot, dot. Um, so at first glance, if I didn't know any better, I would say that it's not recognizing this print F and I would think, oh, maybe I'm not including this correctly. Maybe I need to be changing this somehow. You know, what is wrong with this Go code? But what you actually have to realize is this dot, dot, dot refers to a variadic function. So printf is a variadic function that takes, that can take a variable number of arguments. And this is one of the limitations of CGO. CGO does not support uh, variadic functions, variadic C functions, which is uh, a little bit strange because Go itself has variadic functions, right? So if, if I saw this, I would think, okay, well, maybe I just need to fix this by you know, passing it and uh, a variadic function like args dot dot dot. I would think like, oh, this should fix this. It needs a variadic function. They need some args. I'm gonna pass it just something to make it happy. And uh, that doesn't really change the error. It still fails. So to fix this, either you needed to use a different function or you need to wrap this. And here's, here's an example fix. Here's where we use a wrapped function. So we call printf 
inside our C code over here. And then we wrap it with a function that that takes a uh, single argument, so non-variadic, right? And then we call it with the same parameters as before. And this should work. It prints uh, hello world. Another limitation of CGO is it's C only. So some people may want to try to use uh, C++ syntax like this. Um, standard C out, but that's not going to work. Um, it is possible to uh, wrap C++ with CGO, right? So you would write uh, your C++ code, you would compile it separately, um, and you would expose a C interface to your C++ code, um, and then you would include it here, and then, you know, through a uh, a linker flag, you would pass it to your Go Go executable. Uh, I'm not going going to go into the details uh, in this video how to do that, but that is something that's possible, right? So let's next go and look at a real world example of using CGO. So in this. Uh, in this file, we're using the Apple Foundation and Security APIs to add a secret to the keychain. So one thing we, we note here is um, this is the syntax for passing additional um, linker flags uh, as well as other flags to our compiler. So in this case, we're passing the linker flags to include these two Apple frameworks. And let's look at this code. So one thing you might notice is that there's a lot of like uh, casting and changing of types. Um, in this, for, for example, let's look at this one. So we're, we're passing it a string, a go string, then we convert it into a C string, then we convert it to a pointer, a generic pointer, and then we convert it to a uint eight pointer, like basically an unsigned char pointer. It's just kind of strange. Is like, why do we need this intermediate step? Like, why can't we just convert it from a, a char pointer to a unsigned char pointer, right? So it would seem like we shouldn't need this unsafe pointer. Um, let's see what it says here. Redundant parentheses. Okay. Yeah. It would seem like this should work. Um, however, I'm missing a parentheses here. Okay. There we go. Um, seems like this should work. I do have a test. So let me try and run this test with that change. And what do we have here? Um, let's click on this. up a little bit with the parentheses. Let's call it again. Okay, this is this is what we wanted. Cannot convert C string of type pointer to char to a type of pointer to unsigned char. So this is one of the things you just have to know, right? You have to know that, oh, okay, we can't really in CGO convert from one a pointer type to another pointer type. We have to go through this unsafe pointer, uh, which is matches, ma matches to a void pointer in C. 
So in order to fix this, we kind of return how the code was before. Uh, we did unsafe pointer cast here. Something like this. And this will work. Um, that's all I wanted to cover today. So hopefully you've learned something.